Hello everyone and welcome back to the Genshin Impact Prelude series. As I've said before, this is a series all about the backstories of the playable characters in Genshin Impact. I will only be going to the stories on the character pages, so there may be potential story spoilers for some characters. This also means I won't be going into the manga or story unless their events are mentioned in the character stories. Also, if you like this video, consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, today's video is all about Chang Yoon, so sit back and relax as I read you his stories. Throughout its long history, Liyue has never had a lack of rumors and myths regarding all manner of evil spirits and demons. And regardless of the truth of such rumors, someone has to do something about them. Chang Yun was born into a renowned family of exorcists and has possessed a natural ability to drive away evil spirits from a young age due to his pure yang spirit. His powers of exorcism are far beyond the norm, his mere presence is sufficient to scatter evil spirits. However, this has proven to be an inconvenience for Chang Yun himself, for though he has undertaken hundreds of successful exorcisms, he has never come face to face with a single ghost or demon. Chang Yun believes in his heart that a true exorcist should exercise evil with charms and swordsmanship. This natural ability that he has is just not orthodox. Therefore, he has dedicated himself to the study of exorcism techniques and martial arts, as well as seeking the haunts of evil spirits to prove himself an able and professional exorcist even without his unique physical condition. Yet when will that condition stop being a stumbling block on his path to self-realization? When Chang Yun first ventured out as an exorcist, there had been much talk of an evil spirit lurking inside Liyue Harbor. The victim of these hauntings was a woman from a family with a high enough stature to even have a word or two with the Liyue Chisin. From a time she knew not when, her sleep began to be harassed by sounds that kept her awake, but every time she tried to follow the sound, it would suddenly shift behind her and begin ringing in her ears. This shock caused her unspeakable distress, and she even lost weight for her loss of appetite. Her wealth was enough to hire the best exorcists from all over, but no matter what they tried, they had to retreat empty-handed. And not only did the noise persist, they even grew in boldness. It was then, just when she had given up hope, that Chang Yun walked through her door. I apologize for coming just now, it has been far too sunny lately. I heard that this place houses a very stubborn ghost. Please, leave it to me. Then Chang Yun brought a chair over and sat upon it in the middle of the house for a time. That night, the strange sounds were no more. The wealthy woman finally had a good night's sleep, and she came running to Chang Yun the next morning with an overabundance of gold and jewelry as a reward. But Chang Yun, as was his wont, only accepted his usual fee of a few hundred mora without an ounce of emotion on his face. Ever since that incident, Chang Yun has found that his reputation precedes him for miles around. He has become beloved by Liyue for his style and character, and indeed scholars have given him this appellation a heart of clear water, and a face of ice. However, Kalia's mannerisms and style of Frosty couldn't be farther from the truth. Due to the abundance of yang energy in his constitution, he is constantly troubled by increased body temperature and sudden urges or impulses. He has tried everything to alleviate the issues both physically and psychologically. His methods include not drinking hot water, not eating hot or spicy food, wearing light clothes, not getting into arguments, keeping himself from being angered, staying indoors on sweltering days, and always bringing a parasol when on the job. In short, he attempted to stay away from everything that might aggravate his condition. Despite all this, his yang energy did not subside a whit. A little depressed, Chang Yun began to wrestle with his own body. When he heard about an evil spirit in Dragonspine, he made for the peak wearing only a shirt. Though it was hard enough to keep himself warm, he still felt this insufficient. Digging a hole in a frozen lake, he jumped in and soaked in the icy water while waiting for the evil spirit to show itself. After staying in the lake for half a day, he finally caught a glimpse of his target. However, after pursuing it down the mountainside, he discovered it was only a snow rep that had been frightened off by his flying swords and floating charms. The fever that he ran soon afterward lasted far longer than it would in a normal person. Chang Yun's pure yang spirit is not only a huge obstacle in his path as an exorcist, but a constant daily hassle. 
he must be extra careful to stay away from heady things to which he is very sensitive or risk his yang energy and emotions going out of control. Chang Yun's clan once held a celebration party at Mom and Restaurant, and though he waited until all the dishes had gone cold, he did not expect the tender rice balls to be stuffed with Dui Yun chili. After but a single bite, Chang Yun had no recollection of what happened next. However, according to the victim, Chef Zhang Ling of Wanmin Restaurant, many unforgettable things happened. Chang Yun first jumped up onto the reception desk and shouted, Everything's on me tonight! Never mind that he did not actually have any money on him. He then began to chat with customers at other tables as if they were old pals, bragging to them of how incredible his clan's exorcist arts were, never forgetting to taste other people's dishes on the tables before he left. Lastly, he claimed to have sensed an evil spirit in Wanmin Restaurant. This he did not find, but he did slap a charm on Zhang Ling's forehead and chase her around with his sword. Afterwards, Chang Yun scripted and saved for an entire month to pay Wanmin Restaurant back for the mess and any damages he might have caused. He also gave Zhang Ling an evil warning talisman that he carved by hand. But Zhang Ling, for her part, didn't mind Chang Yun's transgressions at all. Instead, she felt that the crazy Chang Yun was the real Chang Yun, without any personal walls up. Chang Yun has had the privilege of meeting a true friend in his long journey as an exorcist, Xing Shou. In contrast to the hard-working Chang Yun, Xing Shou was naturally gifted and had a much more flexible way of looking at problems. After learning about Chang Yun's troubles, Xing Shou came up with a possible solution. If you can't reduce the effects of your yang energy, what if you sought out an evil spirit that is immune to it? This was a eureka moment for Chang Yun. Since then, Chang Yun has no longer sought to alleviate his condition. Instead, he now tries to get Xing Shou to come with him to find such a spirit. What? Sightings of the legendary Aiyin near the Sea of Clouds? Leave it to me. The old house at Feiyun Slope has been taken over by an evil spirit? My bad, I'll attend to it right away. A master exorcist is staying over at Wang Xuan? I could learn a lot from him. Hmm, better go with a gift. Xing Shou usually just makes up these leads up as he goes, and thanks to his advice, Chang Yun often comes back empty-handed, blaming his bad luck. I tried my best to look for it, and even spent quite a sum purchasing more intelligence on that evil spirit. But I wound up missing it by a hair anyway, Chang Yun says abashed. If Xing Shou has time to spare when such an occasion arises, he will encourage Chang Yun, treat him to some new cold dishes he has found, and then set off to get Chang Yun's swindled money back. A warm and reliable companion indeed, so Chang Yun thinks at such moments. Who could he possibly trust if not his fine friend Xing Shou? In truth, Chang Yun wishes that he could fit in more, but he is often forced to reject the invitations of others on account of his need to control his abundance of yang energy. Of these practices, he finds one particularly incomprehensible, hot springs. Bathing and relaxing in steaming hot water? Even the sound of that scares him a hundred times more than freezing in a lake on Dragonspine. However, he has also heard everyone sing yearning praises of these hot springs, praising their comfort and asserting that they become more so the hotter they are, and that one is filled with energy for a whole week afterward. Chang Yun still doesn't know if this is true or if people are just teasing him. And he would have dared to try it out, if not for the ever-present problem of his pure yang spirit. Xing Shou once asked him this, If you were able to master your yang energy and rid the world of all evil spirits someday, what would you do after that? This seemingly off-the-cuff remark troubled Chang Yun deeply. Perhaps he had indeed missed out a lot in life on account of his condition. But he doesn't regret spending time. If one way of living doesn't work, he just needs to find himself another. And in any case, he already has his answer. If that day comes, well, he'll go to the hot springs then. The tomes that Chang Yun's family has passed down from generation to generation detail every evil spirit they have ever subdued. From little critters to monstrous demons found in tall tales of horror, their varieties are almost dazzling. It was one such terrifying story that inspired Chang Yun's vow to rid the world of evil spirits. But as far as he is concerned, inheriting these books has also proved inconvenient. Other than textual descriptions, the books also contain illustrations of said evil spirits that carefully detail their unique characteristics, even if the artist may not have been the greatest talent. But Chang Yun has never seen an evil spirit in his life. Unwilling to break with his artistic tradition, 
he was at a loss. Ultimately, he would attempt to use his imagination to draw some suitably strange images. Thus did the field guide to demon and beasts grow ever more exotic. Best not to think too deeply about that seven-winged, five-legged chicken beast, or that half-fish, half hilichel half demon. Those other exorcists at least have the courtesy to wave their swords or tack on some talismans. You just sit here for a while and now you say that you're done, and that I should pay you. Who are you trying to fool? Chang Yun faced a great deal of suspicion when he first took up the role of an exorcist. He immediately faced one big hurdle. It was a lot easier to prove that evil spirits are present than not. Of course, he would seem a charlatan even compared to exorcists who just went through the motions. With all the ability in the world but no place to use it, looked on with suspicion and needing to suppress any passionate impulses, those who eventually apologized him were also few. But even so, Chong Yun would not go with the flow and use some fancy act to cover for his real method of conducting exorcism. Even with his unique composition posing countless obstacles for him, Chong Yun has never once considered giving up. One day, he will become the greatest exorcist in Liyue, control his abundance of yang energy, and rend the world of all evil spirits. Perhaps it was this resolve that earned him the god's favor. That said, the vision granted to Chang Yun was one of cryo rather than pyro. As to which of his goals it was that the vision responded to, that is also a mystery. And those are all of Chang Yun's stories. Just like Bennett and Noel, he hasn't really appeared in the story, but he does have a hangout event where players can meet him. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all in the next video.